What was the Earth like after dinosaurs? Most people have heard the tale of the dinosaurs and their tragic extinction at the hand of a massive meteor around 66 million years ago. Dinosaurs had existed on the planet for almost 200 million years at that point. So, for them to die out all at once was a massive shift to the planet's ecosystem. That was of course paired with the fact that the asteroid didn't just kill off the dinosaurs, it killed off more than 75% of all life on Earth, causing a huge number of species to go extinct all at once. The asteroid that struck the planet was approximately 10 kilometers wide and hit the Gulf of Mexico. It caused instantaneous destruction in the immediate vicinity, but the secondary effects of the impact resulted in the end of the Mesozoic Era and the beginning of the Cenozoic Era. But what were those secondary effects, and how did they affect the way life developed right after the extinction of the dinosaurs? That's what this video is going to dive into. Post-catastrophe. When the asteroid hit the planet, it was with an absolutely gargantuan amount of force. So much so that it drove material up into the air for miles and it slightly disrupted the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. According to Paul Barrett, a paleontologist at the Natural History Museum, the asteroid hit at a high velocity and effectively vaporized. It made a huge crater so in the immediate area there was total devastation. A huge blast wave and heat wave went out and it threw vast amounts of material up into the atmosphere. It sent soot travelling all around the world. It didn't completely block out the sun, but it reduced the amount of light that reached the Earth's surface, so it had an impact on plant growth. Found. This resulted in the death of plants all across the planet, which is well understood. What isn't well understood, however, is the exact mechanism by which the rest of the creatures on Earth died. There has been a lot of discussion and debate over the topic, because, despite how massive the impact of the asteroid was, many don't believe that it would have had the force to instantly kill 75% of the world's species, ranging in size from microorganisms all the way up to the dinosaurs. The impact site of the asteroid is known as the Chicxulub Crater, which is located in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The asteroid itself ranged in size from 10 to 15 kilometers, but the crater it created was much larger than that. The giant rock smacked into the planet hard enough to form a crater over 150 kilometers in diameter. The impact caused massive tidal waves and substantial fires across the planet, as well as a number of long-term changes that were exacerbated by the impact. The continents, which had already started to drift apart ever so slowly, were helped along greatly in that process by the impact. There was also an increase in volcanic activity after the explosion, resulting in a further darkening of the sky due to volcanic ash. The greenhouse gases expelled by these volcanoes also resulted in a dramatic global climate shift, which led to what many people refer to as an impact winter. This is not a full-on ice age, but it is a period of tens to hundreds of years in which the climate of the Earth is thrown off to such a significant degree that it causes widespread die-off. Life finds a way. The ecosystem at Chicxulub was absolutely devastated by the blast, but the rate at which life recovered in the area surprises and astounds scientists to this day. Upon conducting research of the physical landscape of the crater, they eventually formed what is now known as the impact origin of life hypothesis. It states that asteroid strikes may actually provide a massive jolt of energy which stirs up biochemistry, therefore kick-starting the process of creating living things. According to this hypothesis, the impact would have created circulating hot water systems, which would have fostered a primitive form of life similar to what was present at the beginning of life on Earth. This hypothesis, however, has since been applied to many other planets seen throughout the universe. It's possible that they've been fostering their own primitive form of life, which we haven't been able to observe yet. Astrobiologist Charles Cockle at the University of Edinburgh went on record saying, the whole of the early planet could have been a giant prebiotic reactor. You can see impacts as generating a whole set of experiments, producing lots of organic material. And then at some point, you can imagine a self-replicating molecule emerged. Cockle. 
Based on these studies, geneticists have deduced that the earliest common ancestor to all organisms in the world may have been a hypothermophile, meaning a microorganism that thrived in immense heat. The idea has not gained widespread acceptance, but it gains traction every day. Post-dinosaur. Following the extinction of the dinosaurs, flowering plants began to dominate the planet. They carried on with the process that had started early in the Cretaceous period, despite the fact that all land animals over 25 kilograms were wiped out. The Earth was effectively left with the seeds of what is present today in terms of plants and animals. The lines present today are directly representative of their ancestors who survived the asteroid blast. The non-bird dinosaurs, for example, all died out, but dinosaurs did survive as birds and gradually evolved into what we know today. And around 15 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs, which is a fairly small amount of time in terms of the scale of the planet, large mammals began to appear. Up until that point, the world was covered with small animals. Vast areas of forest also died out, being replaced by grasslands and savannas. This provided an easier source of food for many different kinds of animals, fostering further evolution of the mammals and birds. Along with this, however, whales diversified with the oceans and sharks grew in size as the climate drastically changed. The continents also continued their path of separation, meaning that the animals present on one continent could no longer interact with those on the others. If you're aware at all of what natural selection is, you know that physical separation is one of the key factors that leads to diversification and evolution into new species. Scientists believe that smaller animals survived the impact simply because they were better equipped to survive it. They could hide more easily and generally had more diverse diets, which meant that even if certain food sources were wiped out, they could continue to subsist on others. There was also likely a lot of chance and randomness involved. Things were violent and tumultuous for a long time, and some animals just gradually died off in those conditions. Mammals began to evolve very quickly after the dinosaurs went extinct because that pressure against large size was no longer there. Previously, if mammals grew too large, they could be easily hunted and eaten by dinosaurs. But now, with that ecological niche opened up, they were free to evolve in order to reach the top of the food chain. Birds were the only dinosaurs to survive the impact, but crocodiles and alligators are two large reptiles that also made it through. Lizards, snakes, and other distant relatives of dinosaurs were also able to survive because of their small size and varied diet. A massive shift in vegetation resulted in flowering plants becoming much more common compared to the ferns and conifers that had previously dominated the planet. Many actually believe that even if the dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct, mammals would still have begun to prosper because of that shift in vegetation and the way forests formed. They were more conducive to mammals than the massive dinosaurs, and eventually we may have seen an extinction event caused by something else. Conclusion. The dinosaurs ruled over the planet for a very long time, nearly 200 million years. Humans, by contrast, have only existed for a couple of hundred thousand years. We've only been around for the tiniest fraction of a percent of the time, and yet we've come so far and have accomplished so much during that short span. Dinosaurs remained largely the same during their venture on the planet, while humans have evolved and thrived in order to make the most of their home. We've created agriculture, cities, electricity, the internet, and so many other things that showcase the bright minds of the human beings that have been born on Earth. It really just goes to show that after the dinosaurs went extinct, Earth was allowed to thrive. People have done everything they can in order to show that they are meant to live on this planet. But if dinosaurs hadn't died out, it is unlikely humans would have come to be. So it's a bitter story to think about how many lives were lost, but a victory in that humans were allowed to exist. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this kind of content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so that you can always see what new stuff we're putting out. 
Leave a comment below if there's anything in particular you'd like to see us make. And we'll see you in the next one.